I'm Professor Joseph Schumann. I'm the Human Rights Coordinator in the Office of Global Learning, and I'd like to welcome everybody here again for our panel, in which we're going to pick up some of the themes that Vince Warren had developed. There we go. Had, Vince Warren had developed, and some other themes that bring the issue of security and civil liberties right here into our municipalities, into New Jersey and um, at the local level. Let me introduce our four panelists um, and extend a very warm welcome to them. Uh, and this is not in order. Uh, and let me just read a brief biography of Ms. Barber. Grayson Barber is a First Amendment litigator and pri privacy advocate with a solo practice in Princeton, New Jersey. She sits on the board of the American Civil Liberties Union of New Jersey and chairs its privacy committee. She's immediate past president of the individual rights section of the New Jersey State Bar Association and advises the Intellectual Freedom Subcommittee of the New Jersey Library Association. Um, Grayson served on the New Jersey Privacy Study Commission and the State Supreme Court Special Committee on Public Access to Court Records. She's also a part-time lecturer at Princeton University. She's a graduate of Rutgers Law School and she clerked with the Honorable Robert Cowan of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. She was also just cited as a litigant in a landmark case that, that was decided by the New Jersey Supreme Court that protects your privacy on the Internet. And in case you think I'm not telling you the truth about that, if you looked at the Bergen record uh, just yesterday, Tuesday, today's Wednesday, right? Just at a Tuesday's Bergen Record, the head story there says, big victory for internet privacy, and it mentions Grayson Barber as a litigator in that case. So if you use the internet in New Jersey and you're concerned about your privacy uh, and you're concerned about the protection of your privacy, you can thank Ms. Barber for that protection. Very glad to have you. Uh, sitting to uh, Ms. Barber's left but my right, is Mr. Gary Nissenbaum. Gary Nissenbaum is also a volunteer attorney with the American Civil Liberties Union of New Jersey, which means that he handles civil liberties and civil rights cases on a pro bono basis. That means he actually does something for free. Last year, he brought a lawsuit about government secrecy in which the Attorney General of New Jersey hid information that other states made available on their websites. On behalf of the ACLU, Mr. Nissenbaum successfully argued that the Attorney General had wrongfully withheld documents from public access. These documents concerned the Department of Homeland Security's efforts to track so-called potential threats in New Jersey. Through his work with the ACLU, Mr. Nissenbaum is currently seeking documents from the federal government that involve the Defense Department's surveillance, listen to this, students, the Defense Department's surveillance of student protests at William Patterson College in Wayne. Um, Mr. Nissenbaum is the managing principal of Nissenbaum Law Group uh, that does very <laughs> litigation and is, has offices in Union, New Jersey, and Manhattan. And perhaps most interesting is he's a published novelist. He writes novels and speaks. Well, that seems strange for a lawyer, doesn't it? He writes novels. Um, what? Scott Turo is a famous. Oh, that's guy. right. Scott Turo is a, right. That's right. You're, you're, you're married to God. <laughs> right. Okay. Very good. Uh, at the next to Miss Barber is uh, Professor Gus Zudo, um, who has his PhD from the University of Saint Andrews Center for the Study of Terrorism and Political Violence in Scotland. Prior to his prior to his employment with the State Department. Gus served as a private consultant for several think tanks in Washington, the, uh, including the Scowcroft Group and Brookings Institute, as well as law enforcement agencies in this area, including the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice. He was a regular contributor to journals such as Jane's Intelligence Review and Studies in Conflict uh, and Terrorism. Gus began his career with the State Department in 1996 as an intelligence analyst dealing with Russian organized crime before becoming an agent in 1999. Um, there's a lot more that we can say, uh, but let me just say he is teaching a course on border security in FDU's Petroselli College Homeland Security Program. So he's a professor right here at FDU. And last but not least, 
Uh, at the end of the table is Mr. Andrew Matson. Andrew Matson is a retired New York City Police Department detective. He served with the NYPD and Patrol Services, Community Affairs, and Organized Crime, <coughs> Organized Crime Control Bureau, Narcotics Division, and the Counterterrorism Division and Critical Infrastructure, the in Critical Infrastructure Protection Service. He was only one of two detectives in the NYPD to be designated as a certified protection professional by ACES International. What's ACES? It's formerly known as the American Society of Industrial Security. They oversee okay. security, uh, security okay. policies and procedures. Okay, thanks. Uh, Andrew holds a BS in criminal justice and an MS in protection management from John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York. And Andrew is also an adjunct faculty member in uh, University College's criminal justice program here at FDU, where he teaches a course on homeland security. Join me in extending a very warm welcome to our four panelists. Good. We've got about an hour uh, for this discussion, and clearly our panelists represent different perspectives on the liberty security spectrum. So perhaps we'll, we'll confine points of overlap and perhaps points of difference. And I suspect the uh, positions that they hold are more nuanced than merely saying that the two people to my immediate right uh, value civil liberties, whereas the people further down the table uh, value security. I assume we'll find, as I said, greater nuance. Let me start with some general issues. The big issue is picking up on some of the themes that Vince Warren had mentioned in his um, very information-rich keynote speech. And then what I want to do is funnel down to some more local concerns to see how homeland security uh, affects our civil liberties right here on the ground. Okay, but let me, let's start with some of the big issues. Uh, after 9-11, the administration proposed and Congress passed the U.S. Patriot Act, which expanded the executive branch's power in a way that has caused concern among civil libertarians. Among the better known provisions of the Patriot Act are the following. Uh, the power of um, executive agents to search a suspect's home without the suspect's knowledge, okay? so-called sneak and peek warrants, uh, the indefinite detention of immigrants, uh, as well as the so-called so -called national security letters, which allows the FBI to search email, financial records, even library records, without a court order um, if indeed there is suspicion of terrorist activities and so forth. Uh, there's a lot more to the, Fed, to the Patriot Act. It was uh, sunsetted and then passed again by Congress with certain modifications, but many of those provisions, its provisions remain in place. So my basic question is, to what extent, asking this of the panelists, do you see the Patriot Act as necessary? And to what extent do you see it, perhaps, as an unwarranted violation of civil liberties that is not necessary for security or perhaps, in effect, a diminution or curtailment of liberties is necessary in the name of security. In other words, looking at those specific provisions, how do you assess the U.S. Patriot Act? Who would like to start on that? I want to tell one story about the USA Patriot Act uh, that I think illustrates the concerns of the civil liberties community. Um, the, after 9-11, when uh, the Patriot Act was, uh, was adopted, uh, the Congress gave new powers to the secret FISA court. Uh, FISA is, is something that um, Vince Warren was talking about. It's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. And for many years, it was about foreign intelligence surveillance, which is to say sort of international espionage. But Congress expanded uh, the jurisdiction of a secret court. And the USA Patriot Act said that now the FBI can go into this secret court to get a secret order to conduct secret wiretapping and secret surveillance of uh, people involved in, uh, well, in any investigation that pertained to terrorism. So the FBI went in in 2002 and asked for a secret warrant to do some secret surveillance. And for the first time in the history of this secret court, uh, the